Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. This is Regents Physics Chapter Seven: Work Power and Energy Video Five. Today's topic is elastic potential energy. The objectives are know the definitions and equations for elastic potential energy, understand work done stretching a spring equals elastic potential energy, and area under force versus x graph equals to elastic potential energy. This force is the force on the spring. Be able to calculate the force of a spring and the elastic potential energy. Elastic potential energy is the energy stored in elastic material as a result of their stretching or compressing when a force is applied. Elastic potential energy can be stored in rubber bands, bungee cords, springs, or trampolines. But in most cases in physics, we are concerning with elastic potential energy stored in the springs, ideal springs that obeys Hooke's law. Work done stretching a spring equals to elastic potential energy. So in uh, spring force versus x graph, the area actually represents work. So in the other force versus d graph, the area represents work. So this is the spring force versus elongation area is the same as any other force. It's represent work. So the area is a rectangle. Work equals one half base times height. Base is Elongation height is spring force. Spring force equals to k times x. So that's the work. But work done stretching the spring. Remember, work equals to energy gain. When you you do work, the energy increases. The energy increased in this case equals to elastic potential energy. So uh, spring energy equals to one half x times f s. We rearrange this equation. Switch x and fs, we get one half fs times x. What is one half of fs? That is the average force. Average force is right in the middle, kind of like your uh, average velocity. We rearrange this equation. We have PES, that's the uh, elastic potential energy, equals to one half kx squared. So we have kind of like two equations, even though they are the same one. They are all derived from work equals to area under the graph. We can rearrange the last equation by multiplying k and divide by k. That's equivalent. Why do I multiply by k? Because k times k becomes k squared. k squared times x squared, that's uh, fs squared. That is the force on the spring then divide by k. So according to Hooke's law, fs equals kx. So now we have three equations. Uh, PES equals 1 half kx squared. This is the one in your reference table. This are the other two we derived. They are useful equations. And in all these equations, fs is the force in the spring in Newtons. This f with a bar means average force on the springs. Also in Newton's, K is the spring constant, depends on the property of the spring. Stiffer spring has bigger K than a kind of a weak spring. This X is the amount of compression or elongation relative to the equilibrium position. So again, X is this quantity from where it's stretched to when it was at rest. And the force in this case, the force on the spring equals to the weight because that's the force used to stretch the spring. We have three equations for our convenience. The first equation is when a force is not given to you. The second equation we can use when spring constant k is not given to you. The third equation is we can use it when elongation is not given to you. Now let's take a look at the graphs. Elastic potential energy is directly proportional to x squared. That means the graph is a parabola. This is very similar to Ke, uh, kinetic energy versus V. So for kinetic energy versus V, it's also a parabola. This is because they, the relationship are very similar. P S to X is very similar to Kes versus V. Let's take a look at this example. As shown in the diagram, a 0.5 meter long spring is stretched from its equilibrium equilibrium position to a length of one meter by weight. If 15 joules of energy are stored in the stretched spring, what is the value of the spring constant? Let's see again, what is given to you? We, we, are, we know 
the elastic potential energy is 15 joules. We also know x is 0.5 meters because that equals to 1 minus 0.5. What is k? Look at your equations. The uh, equation has all these three quantities connected together is this. Substitute everything in. You get k equals to 120 newtons over meters. Some of you, some of you having trouble, remember what is the unit for k. But you can also just use this to derive it. Joules divided by meter squared. That is fine also. Another example. This is, is an example to use the symbols in your answer. Uh, unstretched spring, the diagram has a length of 0.4 meters and a spring constant of k. A weight is hung from the spring, causing it to stretch a length 0.6 meters in terms of k. How many joules of elastic potential energy are stored in this stretched spring? Write down everything. In this case, x is 0 0.2. 0 0.2 equals to 0 0.6 minus 0 0.4. And the spring constant k is given to you. What is PS? Again, use the equation have uh, that's connected all three quantities together. That is PS equals 1 half kx squared. PS equals to k times 0.2 because that is your x. So 1 half times 0.2 squared equals 0 0.02 times k joules. Here is a graph equation. So the graph represents relationship between force applied to each of the two springs, A and B, and their elongations. What physical quantity is represented by the slope of each line? So in this case, remember in the last lesson we learned uh, elastic force versus elongation, the slope is spring constant. Next the question, uh, one kilogram mass is suspended from each spring. Uh, the mass suspended from spring, that's what caused the spring to elongate. And that force is the gravity. Since the mass is the same on each spring, so gravity is the same, that means force of the spring has to be the same. So the force is the same for each spring. The question is, how does the potential energy stored in A compare to the potential energy stored in B? The potential energy stored in the spring is the area under the graph. So here is the area on A, here is the area on B. So as you can see, areas on B is bigger than on A. So A is less than B. So the uh, energy stored in A is less than the potential energy stored in B. Another example, determine the potential energy stored in the spring with a spring constant, 25 newtons per meter when the force 2.5 newton is applied to it. Write down everything you know. K you know, Fs you know, what is Ps? Look at your equation, connect all three quantities together. Is this equation, one half Fs squared over K. Substitute your force and the spring constant in, you have PS equals 2.125 joules. There is another way to solve it. If you don't remember this equation, you can. this is the equation showing you in the reference table, but you don't know what x is. To find x, you can always use the Hooke's law. So you can find x first using Hooke's law, then you can substitute all the quantities into this equation. You have PS equals to 0.125 joules. Another example, a 10 Newton force is required to hold a spring uh, 0.2 meters from its resting position. What is the potential energy in the stretched spring? Write down everything you, you know Fs, you know X. What is the potential energy? Again, look at the equation that connect all three quantities together. You will have Ps equals to 1 half X times Fs. Plug everything in, that PS equals to 1 joule. If you don't remember that equation, you can also use 1 half kx squares. In this case, you, you know what x is, you don't know what k. So how do you find k? You can use Hooke's law, fs equals to kx to find k. Then you substitute k in here, you have the same uh, answer. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.